great to have you here on the holiday. I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is a Thanksgiving Day weekend. This is Sunday, November 27th. Now, I've spent my Sunday doing some house cleaning with my investments. I've been going through my stocks, seeing if any of the changes I've had recently are going to help my situation. I've had some reverse splits, so I should have some super duper low floats now. Hopefully we got some catalysts to help keep them moving. I've also got companies that are starting to make revenues, hopefully getting some value. Now you're thinking to yourself, you're not already caught up with all of that, John. You do a lot of DD. You would think so, wouldn't you? But the fact of the matter is, no, I'm not. And there's a good reason for that. I've got too many stocks. I have been trading since March of 2018, and through that time, I've been accumulating stocks and have over 120 sub-penny and penny stocks. But a lot of them are dead horses. When I first started trading in 2018, I got in just for cannabis, and I was a novice trader. I didn't know anything about diversification, chart reading, or even how to do DD. I just knew cannabis was going to be big, and I wanted to be a part of it, so I got in. Well, the next two years, that's all I invested in, and even though the sector got huge and big and even global, the charts, they were going downhill steady for two years. They finally hit their bottom March 28th, which is when the entire COVID market, when we had COVID and it all crashed, that's when we all hit the bottom. And that's when I started to diversify. There were a lot of great deals, a lot of low prices on a lot of stocks. So I started looking around. Then we started getting free money from all that COVID stuff. And the very last check we got in February, a ton of people put it into the market. And the OTC market, February 2021, was the hottest I have ever seen it. It was literally an inferno, blazing, blazing, blazing. I was cashing in stocks every three days for a thousand percent gains. So I was having a great time. Now, of course, because they were day trades, I wasn't doing any DD. I was jumping in, doing my thing and getting out, jumping in, doing my thing and getting out. But as fast as February started, pow, it came to an end. And anything you didn't get rid of, you probably got stuck with. Hello. And I got stuck with a lot of dead horses. That was the problem. February had stocks moving that should have never moved. They were dead corpses in the grave, yet they were still on the market. I'm talking about companies that had no filings for 10 years, no management, no revenues, and yet they were still on the open market and could be bought. And because of that scenario, the SEC got involved in September of the same year. They made a lot of changes and boom, boom, here comes the expert market for anybody who's late on their filings. They don't put up with that anymore. Now here recently, I've been trading stocks that I've been sharing with you, and I've been accumulating all of this time, so I've had to do some house cleaning, and I'm looking for stocks that deserve my time, energy, and money. And I found one that I am looking at. It has had some news here recently, and I thought we should look at it together. So we're going to be taking a look at a stock that is in my portfolio and has had some big news. There's been a big change with the company and that's why I'm actually looking at it and really why you should be looking at it too. So Baumo Inc, ticker B-O-M-O, -O, finished the day at triple zero two, which is an ungodly low price. The absolute lowest you can buy any stock on the open market is triple zero one. So this is just hovering over the floor right now. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got one of those two green ticks I'm telling you to always look for for a long hold. Transfer agent verify. The other one is verified profile, which they don't have yet. Now, these represent a lot of important information that's being validated behind the scenes. So if you're going to be in a stock for a long swing, a long hold, you really do want to see these. But if you're just in it for a short swing or a day trade, isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. Now, our business description here is outdated. They're telling us about Cruzani. Well, it's not Cruzani anymore. If we jump over to one of their filings that came out October 5th, this will give us some catch up on the history here. They tell us here that on May 31st, 2022, the company changed their name from Cruzani to Baumo. And then on June 16th, they received a certificate of name change so that it's all legal. 
In addition, as a result of the merger completed in May of 2022, the nature of the company's business has also changed. Baumol's vision is to complete its vertically integrated business model, abbreviated VIBM, capable of providing services and added value to all segments of the human relations tech market in the U.S. and worldwide. Baumol's AI-driven platform, will automate the end-to-end -end hiring process with its AI-based matching engine while providing just-in-time content, resources and tools such as video interviewing, and cultural and technical assessments so that hiring organizations can vet their candidates. The Baumo VIBM will be complemented by our recruiting as a service, which allows clients to outsource the management of their recruiting process. In addition, Baumol's VIBM offers unique added value via e-learning programs by interview mastery and selecting excellence. So what was the company's relative volume around this big news today? Not as big as I thought it was going to be. She dropped considerably. She's doing normally 416 million shares a day. Today she only did 186 million. Maybe the big news isn't good news. Share structure, what do we got over here? Too many shares. Have we seen a float this big before? 24.5 billion shares in the float. And that is virtually all of the outstanding. Now the insiders, they've got 837 million shares. That is your management, your hedge funds, institutions, big whale investors, people like that. But the majority of them are all in the float. It is huge, 24.5 billion. Financials, well, we don't have anything here on the boards annually and quarterly. Hey, we do have some money coming in. It's coming in pretty quick, actually. What I mean by that is the merger just closed in May, and here it is in June, and they've already got $61,000 on the books. Now, we know it's thousands because we've got to take those three zeros right there and put them behind any of the numbers on this chart. And they got to keep 40,000 of it, so they're getting to keep 66% of their revenues as gains. Now, there is another financial disclosure here that should be out for September, and they did file it here just about a week ago. And they've got one more filing, which is the one I really want to share with you. So let's take a look at both of these. This is their financial. I want to give you just a flavor of how they sit financially. Total assets. At the end of December that just passed, they were at $38,000. At the end of September, they were at over $95,000. So they have gone up just a little bit over $50,000 in assets. Now their liabilities, that's a completely different story. Total liabilities right here. At the end of December, they were at $880,000. They have jumped considerably at the end of September to $3.2 million in liabilities. But as far as I'm concerned, that's the price of doing business. They have expanded. The other thing I want to show you is that they are currently running at a loss. At the end of September last year, they were down $323,000. At the end of September this year, they're down $910,000. But to be completely honest, I'm not worried about that. It is a startup company, and startup companies have liability, they have debt, they run at a loss. That's just the nature of the game. However, we know this company has just gone through changes from Kuzani over to Baumo. They are now starting to generate revenues, so I'm really not too concerned about the financials not sparkling the way I would hope they would. Now let's take a look at that other filing that came out because it is the big news. The company has approved a reverse split of one and one thousand. It's huge folks. For every 1,000 shares you own, they're going to give you one new share. And it'll be worth the same price as those thousand shares. Now right now the price is triple zero two. After the reverse split of 1,000, the price will be kicked up 1,000 times and the price will be 20 cents. Share structure is going to change too, right? Absolutely. It's now going to drop from 24.5 billion down to 24.5 million shares. Now, in my book, that constitutes a low float now. 
I know low floats are under 10 million, although some people on Twitter think anything under half a billion is a low float. But in my book right now, 24 million shares is a low float. Compared to 24 billion, I hold this stock. So I'm kind of glad to see the float get down. I'm not happy to go through the reverse split, but what are you going to do when you're already in it? Last thing I want to share with you is some information I found just by doing a search on Google. This is something that was not presented to us over at the OTC markets. And I have no clue what date this came out except to say it definitely looks absolutely current. First thing I want to share with you is what they said here. Following a successful product market launch in February of 2017, today, Balmo is focusing on developing strategic partnerships and has entered a revenue generating phase with a targeted customer pipeline. They also go on to tell us that Balmo has more than doubled the company's Twitter audience as well as substantially grown followers on LinkedIn and Instagram, which now allows Balmo to post updates for shareholders on the social media platforms more effectively and in real time. So it seems to me they would like you to follow them on Twitter, LinkedIn, or Instagram. You'll probably get more information faster that way. So they make it sound. Then they go on to tell us that following the broadened market reach of Baumol's largest corporate client, Endeavor Group Holdings, which is on the New York Stock Exchange, ticker EDR, Baumo has been engaged to fulfill multiple strategic senior IT positions for the Endeavor Group of companies in Bulgaria, Lithuania, Estonia, Croatia, Czech Republic, Austria, Finland, Poland, and Germany. In order to speed up the pre-selection of qualified candidates for the Endeavor group of companies in the EU, Baumol's management decided to outsource professional recruiters based in Ukraine who are more familiar with human resource markets in the EU. Our mission is to find perfect candidates for Endeavor in the EU while helping Ukrainian HR professionals withstand the hardships created by the Russian invasion. So there you go, folks. They are working hard over in the EU and many countries to expand, and they're working here in the USA as well. They are now starting to generate revenues. Everything has a green light, and now we're going to have a low float. And if you're not already in it, now would be a good time to consider it, not just because I'm in it, but because it looks like they are going places. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we have shuffled on over here to my free trading platform, Think or Swim. TD Ameritrade gives this to you absolutely free when you sign up for their free trading account. And all you got to do is keep your account open and you can use this anytime you like. What a deal. So we are looking at BOMO. This is a six month, four hour chart. She was sitting on the absolute floor here at 0001, bouncing up to 0002. And she did that for about four months, just going sideways. Then it rallied like crazy when all that merge news came out about BOMO. She ran off the floor from 0001 up to 0018. Did that in about two weeks, from the 7th of May to the 19th of May. That is a 1800% gain. That means for every $100 bill you could have gotten in down here, if you sold up here at the top, you'd have made $1,800 for every $100 bill. She did fall fast. She stopped falling when she hit her 200-day SMA here in the 0005 range, which she sat in for a few months there as well. Did have a couple of bounces, but then she started to dribble down the last 45 days. In the last couple days, she has fallen hard, right back to the floor of 0001 because of the reverse split news. People aren't excited about getting into reverse splits before they happen. They want to get in after they happen. That's when you're going to see more most of the investors jump ship. They're going to be upset when they wake up and see most of their shares are gone. And they're going to sell even at a loss. And you're going to see the price fall, fall, fall after the bell. Then it's going to start to climb because the new buyers are going to come in. Seeing that it has got a new low float, they just did a merger and they're starting to make money. I think it's going to be looking appealing. Technicals on the four hour chart, they don't look too appealing. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator is under the pink and falling, just like the MACD doing exactly the same thing. RSI is very low down here at 38 right now. Our 20 day, one hour view. 
We got a picket fence going on here, a barcode. She's bouncing between 0003 and 0004, up and down, up and down. In just the last two days, has she done anything different? And it wasn't good. Fell all the way down here to the floor of 0001. And as you can see, she is working her way up. Now, I do want to point out something here, folks. There may be a likelihood that your chart doesn't look like my chart. And you're wondering why. Well, see here. You see how we can see this is working its way up little by little and is now just sitting underneath the nine day SMA wanting to jump on top. Well, this is what the Heiken Ashi bars tell me. If I just use your everyday standard candle that most people use, that's what it looks like. You get a straight line up and a ceiling sitting on it. Well, I can't read anything from that. I don't know if she's working her way up or if she's about ready to fall. I have no idea. but using the Heiken Ashi, right there, Heiken Ashi, you get a flavor of what's going on. You can see the travel of the stock. There's no bald spots. Much easier to read, much easier to draw your channel lines and your pennant lines around. So I like you can using the Heiken Ashi over the standard candle because I think it just gives you more information. Looking at our technicals on the one hour, things are calming down now. The PPO is starting to level out. She's not falling anymore. We got an imminent crossover on our MACD starting to push up and our RSI has pushed up to 43. Five day, five minute. Bouncing between the three and the four, took a drop down to the floor, bouncing between one and two. Looks like she wants to start climbing now. She's on top of the nine day. You can see that is pushing up. Our technicals, they show that too. We are now up to 53 on our RSI. We've crossed the signal line and we are on top of the pink line on our MACD. Same with the PPO. Now what I notice here is a pattern that I'm always looking for. My PPO, as you can see, the blue line is pushing up. This is the ADX. You can think of it as trend continuation. Now, it's not about whether this red line is pointing down or up. It's about is it still going in one direction. Doesn't matter what way it's pointing, just is it not changing direction. What this tells me is that through all this area here, she was going up and down, up and down, up and down. And then right in this area, let me see, I'm going to get my timeline here so you can actually see this a little bit better. We're going to throw a line right there and right there. All right, you can see the red bars right here are falling, 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 and then she started climbing, climbing, climbing. All right, you see how the red line is coming up and the blue line is coming down? When you see that pattern with your PPO on the top and your ADX on the bottom, as I have here, the price is absolutely falling 100%. When they get real close and start to change direction, it starts to grow. See how they got real close right here? And now this one's going up and that one's going down and the price is pushing up. And this has not changed direction yet. When this starts to fall, this will change direction. It hasn't changed. When this starts to fall, this will start to fall. So as long as these two are spreading, it is growing. Now in all honesty, I don't expect it to grow. <laughs> No, I don't. Not before the reverse split. Now, I'll be honest. I don't care when you all get in. I'd, I'd be happy to have you buy this stock at any time, considering I own it. But being your pal, I'm telling you, you're probably going to want to wait until after the split, after it falls, when all the disappointed investors get out, and then get in. The only time I would probably buy a stock before a reverse split is if I could get it for that triple zero one. That'd be the best absolute price you could buy, even with the reverse split. You could buy a million shares for $100 if you could get it at 0001. But normally when it hits 0001, the ask is 0002. So no, in most, almost all cases, I would wait till after the reverse split, after the fall, and when it starts to bounce back up, that's when I would get in. And that's when I would say get into Baumo. I think she's got everything going for her. She's going to have a low float. She's already making money. They just had their merger. Everything looks good to me. But hey, do some more DD. Just don't trust what I say. There's more to be known. And who knows? I may have gotten something wrong. So the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.